So today we are near Paul in Dorset um, in this beautiful home and garden and we have just completed this incredible outdoor kitchen. It's brick built and it's got lots of different appliances including this Traeger which is the first time we've ever put one in one of our kitchens. So if this is something you want to see stick around and we'll jump into this video. So when I first arrived here and we had a, we had a meeting on site with the customer, um, the the patio, all of this patio, everything was down already. This shelter was already here. They had these um, these sofas and things there. Um, the customer had their own Traeger. I think he had an old Napoleon trolley barbecue as well. Um, so which was over there, but he was looking for something more uh, more permanent, like a you know a permanent like kitchen area and a bar and a socialising area. So we looked at different options. There was, he didn't have anything specific in his mind that we wanted, but what stood out as probably the best idea was to try and match the brickwork that they've got on the walls behind here, the brickwork that you've got on the house there. It would be a really good way of tying this outside space you know, into the actual house itself and with the existing wall behind. Um, and in terms of the layout of it, um, the customer, obviously, he had, um, he had an idea in his head of what he wanted. So he wanted a new Napoleon barbecue, he wanted a monolith Kamado, and he wanted to reuse his Traeger. So we had to find a way to keep all of these in the kitchen, but also create an area, like a bar area, um, for the friends and family to, to sit in and gather. And, you know, we went through a few different layouts. We looked at, um, you know, a U-shape coming along here, and we looked at having the bar area over here. But it was very um, important that um, this sofa remained underneath the shelter. We didn't want to push it underneath there. We wanted to leave that in the dry. So, so what we decided to do was push the sort of the bar preparation area over to here. Um, so you can see it is, it is outside here. The majority of the kitchen is underneath there. We are going to put some guttering along there. So when that rains, you get a lot of water that will come down onto there. We're gonna put some guttering on there. We're gonna outlet it down there, which is gonna stop any of the, you know, the stuff from the roof coming over, but it will stay. But this is an area that you'll be able to use in the summer. You could also, at a later date, put an awning or something like that over there just to keep this whole um, this space in the dry as well. Um, but this is just going to be, like for the time being, a social area used when the weather's nice. Um, right, so let's talk about the kitchen itself. So as you can see, it's made of bricks, and the bricks we used were the ones to match the wall and the house. Um, for the worktops here, we have used a 20 mil thick dark granite. So granite is always a like our go-to for when you're using outdoor kitchens. Um, other options include Decton you can use, or you can use like a polished concrete is another option as well. We have in the past used porcelain slabs as well. So if you're trying to sort of um, save money on, on doing the worktops, a porcelain tile is a really good way of doing it. The only downside to that is that you can get, uh, you have grout lines uh, in between each tile. Um, so coming along here in appliance wise, we have got a beef eater stainless steel single fridge here. So that's gonna keep all your drinks, all your food cold in there. What we've done under here, um, which I really like, and this is actually a first for us, is rather than using, so we've created a shelf here, which is gonna be really handy in the bar. You're gonna be able to keep <coughs> glasses, drinks, plates, you know, whatever you want to underneath there. We have in the past used um, like oak worktops that you get in, in a kitchen. Um, but I decided for this, we were gonna use an oak sleeper. So this is just, 
This is 1.1 meters wide. Oak sleepers, are, they come in 2.4 meter length. So we've got one oak sleeper, chopped it in half, and that gives a really thick, chunky shelf there. Um, and the oak ties in really well with the brickwork. I'm really, really pleased with how that's come out and, it, and it's very functional. It's gonna get used a lot. Um, coming along to here, this is a Napoleon Prestige Pro 500. So you would have seen in our previous videos, we do a lot of the 665s. So this one is ever so slightly smaller. It's exactly the same barbecue, it has all the same features, just not quite as big. And actually, for the space that we've got here, it works really, really well. We wouldn't have space to put a bigger one in here. Um, otherwise, the bar would have been pushed right over there. So we've got the, the Pro 500 there. Um, it's got the um, infrared back burner as before. It's got the four main burners. It's all completely stainless steel. It lights up. It's got the internal lights. Um, it comes with the 25-year warranty. It's an absolutely fantastic grill. Underneath that, you've got your double... Um, stainless steel doors. And again, that is for storage, for keeping any accessories. You've also got your gas underneath there um, and you've got the power underneath there as well. Um, you'll notice we've got a vent at the back there. So if there's any leaks from the gas, the, the gas has got somewhere to go as a safety precaution. Um, coming along to here, this is the Napoleon um, drop-in infrared burner. So Napoleon do a range of side burners. You can get hobs and you can get infrared ones. You can get singles, doubles, drop-ins, built-in ones. This is a drop-in, which means it sits on top of the worktop and it's infrared. So this, um, this grill will get really hot really, really quickly. It's perfect for searing steaks and things like that. So you can reverse sear your steaks. You can put a steak in there. Um, you can smoke it for an hour or so with some cherry or some apple. And then once that's got to the, like a rare, you can then put it on here and sear it and get that really nice crust around your steak. Those are really, really handy for doing. Coming along for here, oh, so underneath here, you also have a pull-out bin as well. So this is a stainless steel bin. It's got a big opening in there. Um, you can then go on to Amazon, wherever you want to, and buy a big bin to put in there. Um, plenty of space there to get rid of all your rubbish. It did actually come with a, a stainless steel loop as well, um, which you can put a bin bag in or something like that, but that's come out now, and we're just gonna put a, uh, a solid bin in there. Um, so here we have the Monolith Classic uh, Kamado oven. Um, I'm a big fan of these. We put lots of these in our kitchens. It's a really versatile oven. It runs on charcoal. Um, you can use it for doing pizzas, um, slow cooking, smoking, searing, lots of different options. Um, it runs, basically the temperature is controlled by this vent at the bottom and this vent at the top. Um, the more open you have them, the hotter it gets. You close them down um, and, the, and it will it will cool, it will stay at lower temperatures. Um, once you've got this set, this thing will it will stay at temperature for 14 or 15 hours. So if, if you wanted to slow cook a brisket overnight or something like that, it's very, very easy to do it with. Um, you can see that we've inset this into the worktops here. So we've cut a hole out, dropped it in there. Um, and that's really cool because it gives you a lot more space around here for storing things. Um, in the past, we have, um, you know, just returned our walls down there and down there and had like a shelf along there. Um, but this way, I think it just gives you a little bit more extra worktop space, which, which is really handy. Space, uh, worktop space and preparation space is, is, a, is a must when you've got an outdoor kitchen. Um, just down here, we've got a single stainless steel cupboard. Um, <clears throat> and that is purely for storage. But what it also does, we've I don't know if you can see, but in the side here, we have put a hole in the bricks um, because the Traeger, which I'll talk about in a minute, the drip tray or the drip chute for the Traeger is on this side here. Um, and so A, to keep it within the post here, and B, to be able to access the tray, we put a hole in the brickwork there. So that tray can be put in and out um, to catch any of the drippings from there, uh, and it can, it can be accessed from in here. Also, that can be used for storing charcoal and other accessories and things like that. Coming over to here, this is a Traeger. Now, this is really exciting for us because we have just um, partnered up with Traeger. So we're now being able to offer Traeger to all of our customers uh, with our kitchens. Um, 
And so the customer in this case had his own Traeger already. This is the Ironwood 885. Uh, and he was really keen to keep hold of it and integrate it into the kitchen. So what we've done is taken the Traeger off its legs. They come on trolleys. Um, we've taken it off its legs and put a lower shelf, similar to the way we do with the Kamado oven, um, and sat it on there. Um, the Traegers run on electric, so they need electric. You plug them in, um, and they're like a regular oven at home. You turn it on, um, and then you can set the temperatures. They come with apps. Um, they're very, very clever. Everything can be controlled wirelessly, um, and they're just brilliant for slow cooking, doing wings, any sort of barbecue at all. Um, you've got lots and lots of space in there, two huge shelves there. <clears throat> so you're going to be able to cook, I don't know, eight or nine roast chickens in there, like briskets, pulled porks, um, ribs chicken wings, anything that you want to. These are absolutely amazing ovens and I'm really excited to start putting more of these into our kitchens. I'm really excited to have this one in this kitchen and it works really, really well with all the other appliances that are in here. So this has been a really enjoyable kitchen um, for us to build. Um, not only because of the design and layout it, but the customer is a real barbecue enthusiast, which for me is a, is a really great thing. We've had lots of great chats about barbecue. Um, so it has been a real pleasure to build this one. Um, if you want to see another one like this, I'll leave a link up here. Go over there. If you're looking for an outdoor kitchen, you need some inspiration or some ideas, go over there and check those out. We try and build one of these uh, once a week and we post it on YouTube for you to see. Uh, if you want to see uh, other projects that we're up to more currently, uh, we have Instagram, we have Facebook. Head over there, give us to follow we try and post on there a couple of times a week just to show us show you what we're currently up to so thanks very much for watching this video and we'll see you on the next one